Hello and welcome back. Today's topic is on invention and innovation. Invention is the key tool all across the innovation domain. So in this episode, likely for the first time, we'll make a clear difference between invention and innovation, which once understood may literally change your company and it could start you on a journey that shows you that invention is the key tool in the, the innovation toolbox. You'll get a great review of these three types of innovation processes, why companies struggle with innovation and invention, and further, even how famous inventors and innovators can upset the apple cart in our ability to do a better job in understanding invention and innovation. So stay tuned and we'll set the record straight. Inventions keep the world spinning. From fire in the wheel to today's high tech, Inventions power change. Turn your inventions into reality. Learn how to get your ideas to market. This is Invent Anything with John Cronin. So today we'll cover eight topics. First of all, why is this discussion even needed? And then we're going to get into innovation and some definitions in topic two. Topic three, we'll talk about how companies struggle with innovation. Topic number four will be the tools and processes of innovation which gives us a grounding of what those are. And then we'll get into invention and the definition of that in topic five. In topic six, just like in a previous topic, we'll talk about why companies struggle with invention. In topic seven, we'll talk about the tools and the processes of invention. And then we'll stitch it all together in topic eight, where we'll demonstrate that invention is the key tool set uh, inside of innovation. And then of course, we'll wrap up. Now, when we think about the audience as before, we're thinking about the audience, why you would need to want to listen to this. And the first piece of this is that some of the audience would want to gain a deeper insight into the very different terms. If you are managing an innovation or invention in your culture, this is for you. But for those managers or supervisors that want to get a briefer on the difference between invention and innovation and how it can leverage your company, this is for you. You know, there are ways to sort of understand the connection between invention and innovation to leverage the business. So if that's what you're interested in, this is also for you. And also, I think most importantly, for those that are involved in innovation or invention in companies, recognizing how these things intertwine is vital. So why don't we start off in topic number one? Why is this discussion even needed? First of all, invention and innovation terms generally get mixed up even by experts. I talk to experts almost daily and I ask them the question of what the difference is and they really falter to answer it. You know, if we study the differences between invention and innovation, we can learn how to innovate better. Many companies have started and later closed billion dollar innovation centers. Just think about it. A billion dollars for an innovation center that three to four years later they close because they're not getting any results. How is this even possible? We, we're gonna understand the terms that they have may have missed and maybe they could have, have foregone that investment and not lost the money. We see companies constantly starting new innovation and invention programs and many times they fail. We see companies that are producing products and companies products results are directly tied to how the people in the company invent new ideas and events along this innovation path towards results. But invention and innovation are totally different processes. They're not well connected. So we need to do a better job to understand this. You know, when companies hire people, are they hiring people for innovation expertise or invention expertise? Few people have both these things. You know, without a well-founded, understood differences in innovation and inventions, most companies fail to create the right internal processes for innovation. They leave such a very important set of processes to evolve in an ad hoc way. This gives innovation sort of uh, a bad name. I mean, it's the lifeblood of a company and this is gonna be developed ad hoc. So it's very important. So that's why the discussion is necessary. So why don't we turn our attention to sort of innovation definitions. And you're gonna find here that like a lot of definitions, it's circular. So the innovation definition is by definition, the action or processes of innovating, circular. If you dig, dig deeper, you'll find innovation means new methods, new product ideas. But I take great uh, pause at that because I think that's wrong. I think that innovation clearly is more on developing a new product than it is on a new idea. Innovation 
also means processes of moving the idea from mind to market. I want to stay with that one, moving an idea from mind to market. You see, if we take that direction, it's a broader context. Innovation, by the way, has many types. It means change, alteration, revolution, upheaval, transformational metamorphosis, reorganization, and on and on. There are many innovation types. If we take a look, you can add innovation in the business approach, in the market approach, and how your product or your technology develop. So innovation can play a role there. We can see that innovation can also occur at any place in your business. So what we're gonna do is show you a graphic and this graphic is gonna talk about how you can tie these two together. So to think about this as a new model for innovation tied to business issues. You can see very clearly in this picture that we have business issues on the left like business, market, product, technology, intellectual property, intellectual capital. And on the top, you can see the many types of innovation, change, alteration, revolution, upheaval, et cetera. Now just sort of think about it for a minute. There are different types of innovation. So you could have an upheaval or you can have just a small change, both are valid innovations. On the other hand, you can have a change in the business, but maybe uh, an alteration in the product, but a revolution in the market. Think about Uber for a minute. What is Uber? It's a, a tremendous change in the business model, but it's just an app, right? So the technology is a small change with a business model is a pure upheaval. So as we start thinking about this new model, I think it'll breathe more life into innovation and what it means. But one other thing is, is a third dimension to this chart. The third dimension is invention. So not only is the various innovation types against different business uh, issues, but the type of invention within those is all different. So I want you to stay tuned. We're gonna define the three key innovation processes used today. And surprisingly, we're gonna demonstrate why innovation is really a struggle in companies, notwithstanding the fact that innovation wasn't even in companies' vocabularies prior to the 1980s. So stay tuned. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Topic number three, we're going to talk about how companies struggle with innovation. I mean, just sort of think about some of the things that you might well know. Clearly, there's rapid disruption uh, in, in companies' uh, markets with new technologies. Think about IoT and mobility in the cloud and how that's changed everything. There are new service models, on-demand crowds, etc. There are new... Uh, New, new version of how fast products decline. Products can come and go in little as 18 months to 12 months. Just think about the money available. There's huge financings available. You can throw 18, 20, 30 billion dollars at something new and, and give it a life overnight, like Uber. Uh, another thing that companies struggle with for innovation is that R&D investment doesn't correlate well with innovation. Only 50% of the most top innovative companies uh, are the top R&D spenders. Apple, for instance, is the number one most innovative company, but it's 15th in the R&D spend. So there's not a very strong relationship between R&D investment and innovation. In most organizations, there are many specific inventive innovation problems. For instance, the visuals get siloed. They get stuck because of, quote, expert blindness. The expert's always right. They're slow to react and change. They have raving incrementalism and on and on and on. You know, when we take a look at how companies struggle, we recognize that until recently, uh, innovation models have been pretty flat. Uh, and this goes way back to, to the 1700s. If we take a look at the next chart uh, and we look at how innovation models have changed, let's kind of review it. I mean, from the 1750s to the 1800s was the first industrial revolution, right? That was a sort of a shop floor driven innovation process. Then the second industrial revolution from 1880 to 1914 is when universities got involved, where research started to drive innovation. Then of course you had wars in 1945 to 1980, you had sort of the post-war innovation cycle where large companies did R&D that became heavy industrial. And then of course you had the rise of information technology from the 1980s to 2000, where IT and all sorts of technology and software drove innovation. And from 2000 to 2015, we've seen a lot of what's called open innovation, partnering between companies. So the question is, what is the next model for innovation? And where does it all head? 
But you can see from 1750 to almost today, there's been very little change in innovation models. You know, business deals for innovation uh, are not a way to guarantee results either. When you do corporate venturing or M&A or license or transfer, or you're outsourced things for R&D, you know, that's another model for innovation, but even that isn't working today. If we take a look at companies don't have the resources to do new innovations and they don't have a well-developed innovation program. Companies don't have enough inventive horsepower in the companies. They need to innovate quickly, but their competitors just acquired a company with some brand new technology. So what do you do about that? Companies really won't even fund the implementation of their own innovations, mainly because they, they have so many to deal with. Companies get started on just a sheer number of new products in every sector. And it appears there's no way to get ahead because they can't focus. Companies need much more novelty. They need to be sort of thinking out of the box. They, have, they need more ideas to select from. In some cases, most of the ideas don't even come from the company that they need. They come from outside the company. Companies sometimes need new broad sweeping technology. Uh, just think what AI is starting to do. You're finding it in everything. So how do you get involved in innovation when you might not have that core competency? And then of course, there's the competition where you're constantly trying to innovate around the competitor. So boy, there's a lot of issues like companies str struggle with innovation, which moves us to topic number four. There are really three basic types of innovation models out there. Uh, and these innovation tools and processes are broader and more far reaching in an organization. Uh, and they move from everything from the idea all the way through manufacturing. The first one is stage gate. This is sort of an example from the 1980s that is used today. It's a stage model for new product development where it's a project management methodology used to create a project from idea to launch. Usually you have a product design, you're measuring various stages of evaluating it from what the customer wants, what the competitive environment is. You're looking at each stage of how to develop the prototype all the way to final manufacturing. So it's a stage gate approach. Many companies use this. It started in the 1980s. Uh, where only a few companies use it. And today, many companies use it. But then it changed. Around the 2000 timeframe, what happened is StageGate was going to not be as agile. So an agile method was created as a way of doing rapid and fast prototyping around the different stages of the StageGate. So when you add agile methods to StageGate, you have much more flexibility, much more turns of the prototype so that you can listen more closely to what the customer wants. A third type of innovation processes also started in the late 70s is design thinking. Design thinking is really problem solving rooted. Basically, the idea is design thinking has been applied to new product and services all the time, but they start from the problem out. The design tries a process to fully understand the problem, then develop a wide range of possibilities, then iterate on candidate prototypes and test them through the customer. You know, there are a lot of consulting companies out there that specialize in innovation and they usually are integrated in the companies. Some companies use hybrids of these, a little bit of stage gate, maybe in manufacturing, maybe they use design thinking on the front end, and maybe they use agile at the customer level. So you find a lot of companies doing hybrids of these innovation models. Another thing about innovation is there are many courses, both online and, co and in colleges that you can take. Uh, I've met a lot of chief innovation officers that you might not be surprised to find out that most chief innovation officers don't have any formal training in innovation. So they're coming in with sort of the ad hoc background to get innovation started with hybrid processes. And then they're hiring consultants. And then that new chief innovation officer is replacing a previous innovation officer. So now we're stitching together the new innovation officer with what the old innovation officer did. And that's why these companies start to get in trouble because their innovation methods become ad hoc at best. You know, I get to talk to lots of Fortune 500 companies. 15% of the Fortune 500 companies I've worked with since about 1998. And I can tell you it's exactly true that these companies and their chief innovation officers really don't have an adequate background or knowledge about how to make innovation work in companies. You know, it's interesting that even since the 1980s, uh, almost 40 years ago, uh, you recognize that innovation as a, as a practice area uh, wasn't really there. If you look at the next chart, which is a a wonderful tool from Google called Ngram. You can type in any word and it will show you how much that word has been used through history in publications. Take a look at this. The word innovation wasn't even something that we were dealing with in the 20s and the 40s and the 60s. It was really only until the 80s and to today that innovation is quite the stir. Really it's only been about 40 years where innovation 
as almost an insatiable appetite. But prior to that, it wasn't in our vocabulary. So look, stay tuned. We will define invention next and demonstrate why it's really the key uh, tool in the innovation toolbox. And surprisingly, even though invention and innov inventors should be the lifeblood of companies uh, wanting to be more innovative, companies actually don't seem to care about invention. So stay tuned and we'll talk about it. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Well, welcome back. Topic five, invention definitions. And just like innovation, the definition of invention is circular. The definition of invention is the action of inventing something, typically a process or a device. But as we all know from earlier podcasts, an invention really has its roots in creativity, originality, imagination, genius, brilliance. You can add inventions for patents. And we certainly had an episode of what is a patent. As mentioned, there are many types of invention. There are apparatuses and methods and composition of matter and software modules and devices and systems, et cetera. There are many different types of inventions. Many references suggest that invention refers to the development of something entirely new, where innovation refers to the introduction of fresh ideas and technology to an already existing product. In other words, innovation makes use of invention in a very unique way. You know, there's an idea out there that invention is limited to something entirely new. Well, I guess you could say that's entirely new, but the level of newness can be very minor. It can be an incremental improvement. Inventions can have specific types. You can have inventions that become patents and you can have inventions that become trade secrets or publications. You can have inventions that really don't see the light of day. Uh, so there are many types of inventions uh, and many levels of what you do with those inventions. We are left with that innovation companies are all the inventions you need in the product or service. So innovation can maintain a few or a hundred of thousands of inventions. Think about a cell phone. So if you look inside of a company that they're developing a product or service, it could be one product or service, but it could contain hundreds of inventions, but nonetheless, it's one innovation. Many inventions that have no part in innovation because they're not even brought to light in the market. Also, as we talked about in our podcast series, uh, some could be patented and some could be trade secret and some could be published. So there are many things to do with the inventions inside of the innovation. And some inventions could be the result of hard work, but also some inventions could come from discoveries. Uh, if inventions can't be patents because of prior art, that means that it's really an invention that covered a previous invention. In essence, you can see that inventions are key tools and they can be done anywhere in the innovation cycle. You know, when we start thinking about uh, how companies struggle with invention, uh, I had a personal awakening, if you will, with this whole subject. So when I was at IBM, I was inventing quite a bit. Uh, and I was a, 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 still am an electrical engineer with a couple of degrees. One day it, it dawned on me that I was an engineer, but I was really an inventor. And maybe I'm talking to a, a like-minded person. So I started talking to others that I was an inventor, not an engineer. And it was a change for me. You know, when you look at the creativity literature, it'll tell you that novelty is, is looked at as negative initially. I had a client once, the vice president in charge of 3,000 engineers. And he said, John, I have a great team of inventors here. Uh, and I said, would you mind if I could go around and interview some of your top inventors? And he said, no, uh, because he was trying to improve his process. So I interviewed over 20 top inventors. And it was astounding. Basically, I sat down with each of them and they, they said, John, I'm not an inventor, I'm an engineer. And I, I said, really, you have all these patents, but they don't call themselves inventors. So I got the hint that a couple of the quote inventors, which were really just engineers said, you know, it's not good to have an inventor label here. So I actually had one inventor, one of the top ones, actually sit me down and close door and said, don't use my name, but I can tell you, that if we're found inventing uh, versus doing our job, you know, we've had altercations with management. They do not think invention's good. So I fed back to this uh, vice president with two, 3,000 engineers that he didn't have inventors. He had engineers. Although some engineers were inventors. In essence, the culture was negative to invention. 
There's no formal training usually in creativity or invention. So why would a person think it's important? There's no reward system generally in place for inventors. So why would an inventor think it was important? Um, you know, there's a mismatch between the types of inventors. Some inventors invent incremental uh, and good inventions and some are in the breakthrough areas. Uh, how do you deal with that? Is one more an inventor than another? Another thing is that invention is kind of difficult, you know, because it goes against many things that managers want to do because invention is novel and new and disruptive. Also, we've heard it time and time again, not invented here. Where did that phrase come from? In most companies, which says, hey, if you're an inventor, you know, don't, don't talk to me. So we have coming up uh, in the next session, uh, invention tools and processes. And what you'll find, and you will not believe this, that invention is something that we actually are very uh, likely not to talk about much. So stay tuned and we'll be back. You're listening to Invent Anything with John Cronin. Be sure to visit us at inventanything.net. There's information, articles, and more. And you can leave your thoughts and comments there as well. That's inventanything.net. And now back to John and this episode. Welcome back. Now we're talking about topic number seven, invention tools and processors. You know, in earlier podcasts, we talked about things like creativity, associative thinking, continuous improvement thinking. I think those should be reviewed because that will give you a foundational uh, understanding of invention. You know, we, we had found in some of these talks that there were 1,500 creativity tools to help inventors invent. Well, most people don't even know what a creativity tool is. We talked about uh, a number of times, and I want to bring this up as one of the key processes for invention and the process to make people better inventors is mentorship. My whole life's journey started with a mentor at IBM that taught me how to invent. If you look on Amazon and type in invention for books, you'll find over 60,000 books written on the subject. So it's obviously an important pro um, uh, uh, area to discuss. One of the uh, charts uh, we'll show next here is a very interesting chart uh, by a group of uh, Cooper and Ed Egbert who basically invented StageGate. So when you take a look at this chart, you'll find something kind of amazing. On invention tools and processes, what you find is they looked at a number of popular tools that we used, those are the dots, and they try to rate them on the effectiveness and also on the use of the tool. And up in the top right hand quadrant is the tools that are the most effective and the most used, and the tools in the lower left hand quadrant are the ones that are less used and less effective. And I think they had a sample size of 160 companies uh, to basically rate these tools. So you have tools on the real bottom level in the lower left-hand side, which is sort of idea contest and submission forms. But on the top right-hand side, customer visits and focus groups. So think about it. I said there was over 1,500 of these tools. They looked at about a dozen or two. So this whole dimension is to picking the right tool for the right job in terms of how effective it is and uh, how useful it could be. Another chart that we should take a look at really quickly is let's go back to our Google Ngram. This is the word invention typed into the word, to Google Ngram. Quite honestly, I was shocked when I saw this. If you take a look that invention as a term was peaked around 1860, but ever since it's been falling down, as a matter of fact, invention as a term in today's world is not anywhere near a term uh, that it was back then. Why is that? Well, I kind of think about it and it is probably correct that back in the 1800s, was the dawn of all these great inventors, uh, the Edisons, et cetera. And so it's probably like that invention has just been lost now about how important it is. And it's sort of taken over by the word innovation. But no matter what, the systematic studies show us you need to pick the right tool for the right job. And you might not know this, but it's like picking the right tool for the right job. Is a hammer the right tool at cutting wood? No. So when you want to invent, the tools and process of invention, there are many, uh, but you also have to pick the right one for what's going on. And it has to integrate well with your innovation process. So I think it would be very practical to start off experimenting with invention tools to find value and to see if you can move from that ad hoc skill of inventing uh, to more of a systematic approach to inventing. So now we're gonna go to topic number eight, where I'm stitching it together here to try to really breathe some life into innovation versus invention in how you can leverage your company. You see, if you start to understand that invention is a key tool of the innovation toolbox, 
There are three major types of innovation processes we talked about, state, stage gate, agile, and design thinking and hybrids of those. So supposing you have an organization that has some sort of stitched together innovation program, but I'll bet you, you do have that, but I'll bet you, you don't have invention tools. So what we need to do is we need to sort of take a look back at that business issues versus innovation type chart, which we won't do now, but you can recall it, that it had many different innovation types like alteration, upheaval, et cetera. And along the other axis, it had business market product technology, et cetera. And think about this having a third dimension so that you could have a, an incremental business uh, innovation, but you could have a breakthrough in invention type. Well, you could have a, a breakthrough innovation in the technology, but have just small alterations in your process to do that. You know, when viewing innovation success, you can do a short innovation process map of what you do, peer inside that process map and look at it and take a look at your invention capability in each one of those boxes. We have studied many companies and we found some amazing relationships between the key men or key people that have a dramatic impact on innovation. So when you look inside that innovation box, you might not even see that there are key people that are driving this. So those key inventive people are really invention tools, sort of mental milling minds. One of the things we've talked about earlier, and I want to bring back and we can take a look at the next chart, is something Michael Curtin found out in the 1970s. Uh, Curtin did what's called the uh, Curtin Adapter Innovator Skill. So when you look at it, it looks like a, a bell curve, of course. On the left-hand side are high adapters, people that cope and do things that are very incremental, if you will. And people on the right side, he called high innovators. And then people in the middle, he called bridges. And if you take a look at this, we have another thing going on. So it's not just innovation in terms of the innovation type and also where it is in the, in the business or market or technology. And this third dimension that I mentioned, which is the invention type. But now we have to deal with the types of invention and the types of innovation, whether it's more adaptive or, or more innovative or bridged between them. You know, I learned a long time ago about a very interesting tool called the power of 10 rule. It says that for a hundred ideas, maybe a hundred might be worth documenting, maybe 10 of those are patentable and maybe one could change an industry. So the other problem with invention as a tool set in innovation is you need a lot of ideas and you need a lot of inventions to find the right one or you won't be able to judge quality. Now there's another paradigm here and that's we all, we all seem to go there that we all start to talk about top inventors and, and top people in the industry as sort of the Bell, bell star of what's right and what's wrong. If you sort of think about this, uh, Edison invented the light bulb and we all remembered him for that. But he had over 1300 patents and most of the patents dealt with how does he insulate wires? How does he turn a switch on? How does a fuse work? Those you don't hear about. But the light bulb breakthrough invention would not have worked at all had Edison not really figured out how to get electricity safely to your home. There are other top innovators that might sort of give us a, a today view of this. Look at uh, Elon Musk and the companies he started and Tesla. Boy, what an innovator he is. But out of the 1,600 or 1,400 patents that Tesla has, he only has 44 of them. So even though he's a great innovator, he needs a whole team behind him of inventors. So in summary, invention is a key tool for innovation. There are many other tools inside of innovation like planning, management tools, managing of capital, managing of resources, but invention, the invention toolbox is certainly key. So innovation requires invention tools and inventors. And that's how I stitch it together. I simply think of it as innovation as taking ideas from mind to market with broad processes like stage gate or agile or design thinking with some hybrid or mix and match of that. That's what I think about innovation. And then I know there's different types of innovation from everything from upheavals to transformation. And I know it applies to different parts of the business like marketing or technology or products. And I know there's this third dimension of all these wonderful invention tools. So it's really kind of a wonderful world of putting together all the things that you need to know. And by understanding this just in, and getting started in this can do a great job in terms of changing the company. So let's wrap up. We talked about why this discussion is even needed. I did discuss the mix up of these terms and many, many times even experts don't understand it. I talked about billion dollar innovation centers being shut three or four years later. So it's obviously an important topic. We talked about innovation definition, 
which is really, for me, there are circular references, but the one I like the most is moving ideas from mind to market and also talking about the various innovation types, change and alteration, et cetera, against business issues. I talked about in topic number three, how companies struggle with innovation and boy, what a laundry list. We talked about things like whether or not rapid disruption or new business models are important. We talked about that R&D isn't correlated to innovation. We talked about M&A spending and joint venturing and all that doesn't seem to fix the innovation pro pro problem. We talked about in topic four, tools, processes of innovation. We discussed these key processes like stage gate and agile and design thinking plus the hybrids. And most of the processes we showed uh, started in the early 1980s. Uh, but this goes all the way back to the industrial revolution, but boy, the models haven't changed that much. We talked about in topic number five, invention definitions. We changed to this sort of circular argument again about definitions, but certainly these are inventions that have to do with creativity and novelty and creating new types of inventions, whether they're trade secrets or publications or patentable inventions, or the various other types of inventions, whether systems and apparatuses and methods. So there's a wonderful palette of an invention inside of, of the definition. But once again, we talked about how companies struggle with invention. I talked about my personal story about the awakening I had when I recognized at one time that I was an inventor and not an engineer and boy, that was not a good discussion to have with management. I talked about that VP who basically thought he had a whole team of inventors to find out his culture was such that that was a bad word. And, we, and recall that not invented here is a label you hear very much from lots of different companies. So companies do struggle with invention. But if you're gonna fix this, you need to look at invention tools and processes. We talked about there was so many books on the subject in Amazon, 60,000. And um, we even clearly talked about in the engram of Google that since the 1860s, the term invention has been used as a percentage less in our information. So it's becoming less and less important, maybe giving rise to that innovation is more important, which is why we have to understand these differences. We discussed the use of some inventions uh, and their effectiveness and their use. Uh, and then we also went in to hammer out that the right tool for the right job is needed. A hammer doesn't cut wood very well, right? And then finally, we stitched it all together in topic number eight, invention is a key tool set of innovation. We discussed the various frameworks, but more importantly, we said that this was a third dimension to that business issues versus innovation type matrix. We also, the influence of key people and the thinking to this and how it clouds our judgment. Certainly Edison was great, but people think of that as a great innovation. Well, it was a great invention that required many, many inventions to get the innovation to happen. And our friend Elon Musk, certainly a brilliant innovator, uh, but he needs a whole team of inventors underneath him to make it happen. We talked about the power of 10 rule, for instance. How many ideas does it actually take to get in innovation out? Lots. And then finally, we talked about this whole idea of how you can thread between invention and innovation, looking at your process map and to figure out how to make your process better. So I ask you today, when you start thinking about invention versus innovation, that you consider that invention is the key tool in the innovation toolbox. And I ask you to take a look at your process and your people and to try to figure out a way to take a pass at improving it. Thank you so much. And please remember uh, to subscribe to our podcast and our blogs.